The answer can be found in a book from the 8th century BC by someone called Hesiod. Hesiod wanted to write a manual for agriculture, and he had a problem because he wanted to write for all Greeks, but he couldn't use months to say when you should plant crops or when you should harvest them. So instead what he did is he used various um, signs looking at animals, like the return of birds or the actions of snails, and he also looked at astronomy. Um, this is an example of one of his astronomical signs, and he says here that to, when the Pleiades are rising, you begin your harvest, and you're ploughing when they're going to set. Now, if you're an astronomer, that's a bit of a confusing uh, passage, because the Earth spins round, round on its axis once a day. So, like the Sun, the Pleiades rise and set um, every 24 hours. What he's actually referring to is something called heliacal rising, which is the first time you can see something in the on the eastern horizon in the morning sky. And heliacal rising happens because of the way the Earth orbits the Sun. I've got a little diagram here, and if you imagine what you're going to see at midnight directly overhead, that's going to change depending on whereabouts you are in the Earth's orbit, because you're always going to be facing a different part of the sky if you're facing away from the Sun. So over the course of a year, you'll actually see different stars in the sky at different times. Now I've used midnight as the easy example there, but this happens obviously for all times of night. So if you go out and you look at the sunrise, if you have a look at the stars that are on the horizon just before sunrise, before the, the sky gets too bright and blocks them out, you'll see that the stars are slightly different each day, and they appear to get higher and higher in the sky at sun, yeah, between successive sunrises each day. So what I've done is I've had a look to see if there's a sign that could have been used for Apollo Delphinios. And what I've found is that it probably or it quite possibly could be um, the constellation Delphinus. Delphinus rises um, around the same time as the consultation of Apollo Delphinios happens. So, could Delphinus be this symbol? Could it be the marker that tells you when you should be consulting Apollo? Well, we've got uh, four things we really ought to be able to show if we want to be certain about this. First of all, we need to be able to show that the Greeks recognised events like helical rising. We'll need to have an idea that they actually did have a constellation Delphinus, and it's not one of the more modern ones. We'll also really want to be able to show that they use the constellation as part of their calendar. And but finally, we need to show that there's actually an interest in Apollo Delphinios beyond Delphi. Well, to some extent, we've already shown the first one. So we've only got these next three to show. Now, did the Greeks have a constellation Delphinus? This is quite difficult to answer. The earliest description of Delphinus dates from the 3rd century BC, and you find it in a poem called Phenomena by Aratus of Soli. This is a 3rd century uh, retelling of a 4th century um, work by Eudoxus. And here's the bit where he describes um, the constellation Delphinus. And he describes it there as being dark in the centre, but with four jewels outlining it, two parallel to two. And that's actually quite close to how it looks in the sky. This is um, a picture I've done using the Fitz Liberator, which you can download from the Hubble site, I believe. And as you can see, it forms quite a nice parallelogram. So we can be fairly certain that Aratus was describing the constellation Delphinus. But that's the 3rd century BC, and the, the, the Oracle of Apollo was starting up around the 8th century BC. So can we push it further back? That's difficult, because this is moving more into prehistoric times, and if you want to date a constellation, it's really helpful to have historical records. There's been a few attempts at this. Um, Mary Blomberg and Joran Henriksen have um, looked at the phenomena, and they've looked at the position of the stars, and they've worked out that they think the best fit for the description is from Minoan times. So what they think is that this is a Minoan poem that's been passed along by word of mouth, and the version we have from Aratus is simply the one that first made it down onto paper. Um, a similar technique, looking at a sculpture known as the Farnese Atlas, has been used by Bradley Schaefer, and using this he actually puts um, the origin of the constellations down to about, I think it's 1100 BC off the top of my head. 
So that's quite a bit later, but still prehistoric, which would suit us. Um, there's another couple of methods that have been tried. There's a method called stellar stratigraphy by Alexander Gerstein, and this is the idea that bigger areas of the sky got carved out to be constellations before smaller areas. That would be quite bad news for me because Delphinus is a tiny constellation. Unfortunately, there are a few problems with the idea. Um, Argo Navis has been dated to about 30,000 BC using this method, which is before the ocean-going ship was actually invented. Um, so although it's an interesting idea, I don't think it's going to hold. And Richard Hinckley Allen, who wrote um, I think Star Myths, so some similar book, um, it's basically the book that everyone goes to as their first reference. Um, he puts forward this idea, or he hints at this idea, of mythological accretion. Basically, the longer you have a constellation, the more stories that are going to gather around it. And that's uh, an interesting idea, but it's really difficult to put a date on a constellation simply from the number of stories. So, I don't think there's any way we can look at the historical record and say, yes, it's definitely 8th century. But there's um, some interesting artwork. For instance, this is a fairly famous uh, bowl that we have here, and uh, we have a whole load of dolphins on it. And if you look at the, the picture of the dolphin, that's actually quite similar to the shape of the constellation. So we can push this back down to about the 5th century BC. And um, so we, we can't be certain that Delphinus existed in the 8th century BC, but we, we can push it back a bit. Now, did they use the constellation for calendrical means? Well, this is where it gets interesting. 